Tail Costa is a Florida West Coast barrier island, and you can only get there via private charter or boat or the ferry to the state park on the north end of the island. I had heard about the cabins that you can rent at the state park, and I had contemplated renting one of these cabins so I could be the first one on the beach and the first one to get a crack at those seashells. But Hurricane Ian destroyed the cabins, and currently there are no overnight accommodations. There are a few private residences on Kea Costa, and you can imagine my delight when one of the homeowners reached out to me and asked if I would like to stay in his home in exchange for me telling you about my experience there. So beach friends, that is what we're gonna do today. I'm going to show you the most exquisite sunrise I have ever seen. We are gonna to go to the beach and we're gonna comb Coya Costa and I'm gonna identify all of the seashells we find, including a really cool treasure I've never found before. Then I will explain to you about the accommodations that we had and what it was like to live off grid for three days. So if you're ready to start our island adventure, let's go to the beach. Since I have the opportunity to be on this island, I was taking full advantage of it. So I am up first thing in the morning. The sun is not up yet, but when it does, I am going to show you the most amazing sunrise I've ever seen. You can go shelling right in front of the house, but I'm making my way over to the Gulf. Now we have established that I'm here on Kea Costa but I wanna talk about the south end of the island because that is specifically where some of these private residences are and where I am staying. So I need to navigate from here over to there. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm kind of walking along the back of the, this sound here and I am just admiring that sunrise. I did see this massive, this is a lightning whelk and the camera's a little funny because there's not a lot of light here. So that is a live living lightning whelk. I can tell by the animal in it. This time is 6.52, so I just kind of peeked at that lightning whelk, and I'm going to keep it moving. Now, I'm going to be quiet for a minute. The next shot literally speaks for itself. That is the most beautiful sunrise I have ever seen. And man, they go quick. It was crazy. So I did check the timing. This is only three minutes later. So that beautiful fiery, it's gone. Three minutes later, it's gone. I felt really grateful I got to experience it. I just kept looking. It was absolutely gorgeous. So at this point, I've made it to essentially the very most southern part of the island, and I'm going to kind of wrap around it and then walk to the north. So it's looking pretty good, pretty chunky. There's some definite stuff here, but I, I guess I'm not quite around the bend yet, but I'm going to go around the point of the island, and that's the sunrise. That's it. It's gone. That's it. So what we got to experience, I'm so glad I recorded that. It was beautiful. So... It is a little chilly, feels like it's about 52, but it's a nice low negative tide. I have chosen to not get my feet wet. I have waterproof, I have short waterproof boots on, so I'm probably gonna be pretty comfortable because my feet are gonna be nice and dry. So this is a very, this was kind of making me think of Kais, a, a different island that I like to go shelling on. So let's see what we're gonna find here. The first shell is a bay scallop. Yeah, it's pretty good looking base scallop. So that's your average. It's got some nice of that red color. They come in different colors, mostly, at least the ones that I find tend to be that reddish brown color. And there's your lightning whelk. A very lovely example of a lightning whelk. So off to a good start. Ooh, do you like a good buttercup leucine? Yeah, the light is still a little low but that's not going to um, stop me. 
And then I do always love to see the trees with the shells on them. We like to decorate our trees down here with shells that have holes in them all year long, not just at Christmas. So this is a, actually a very beautiful part of the island with a little bit of trees. And here we have a yellow prickly cockle. They are much, you know, I've just noticed compared to the Florida prickly cockle, they're much more rare, those yellow prickly cockles. I don't see them all that often. Oh, hello, Heron. Out for a morning stroll with me? Excellent. And a lettered olive. One of the times I'd come here, this is only like my third time I've been to this island, and one of the times I came here, one of like the only things I found were olives. I guess it's a good island for olives. And this is just the exoskeleton of a horseshoe crab. So they will molt, I guess. They will, uh, when they grow, they get too big for their skin, like a snake. And just kind of, kind of shed that. All sorts of neat things you kind of find at the beach. All right, so what else has washed up here for us? <gasps> No way. So I've never found one of these. So this is an urchin. It is called, it actually has a couple names, either a heart urchin or inflated sea biscuit. So it's got a couple names. Now look at the little hairs inside the, those X marks. Those are like the hairs that you would see on a sand dollar. And I just, this for me, it's just really neat. I've never found one of them. You are really cool. And these are also called sea potatoes. So there's a lot of names for those little heart urchins. Really cool. And that is a gorgeous calico clam, but it is alive. It probably explains why it's so darn pretty. What about you? Oh, you're also quite pretty, lightning whelk. So yeah, we'll get this little, that's actually a critter. We'll put the critter close to the water. I'm wearing shoes that I don't want to get wet, so I'm not gonna get it. Yeah, yep, yeah, it's fine. Okay, what else is out here for us? Okay, we have another calico clam, but this time it is a keeper. The clam is not home. So we can keep that hinged calico clam shell. It's quite lovely. Very nice brown colors on that. Oh, tiny little urchin. So that is a little short spine sea urchin. I have not seen an urchin actually in a really long time. I'm happy to see these little critters. You know, since the hurricane, and actually Kea Costa was ground zero for Hurricane Ian, so this island took it right on the chin. So, get my little urchins back in the water. Hopefully they'll stay there. All right, a couple of things. Another bay scallop. Quite lovely. Yep, yeah, that's a handsome looking bay scallop. Also managed to get this hinged, another hinged calico clam. Really pretty. One of my favorite clams. Oh, I do like a good shark eye. I mean, I really like a good shark eye. They are hard to find, or at least I don't really find them that often. That is a gorgeous. So it's a moon snail, specifically a shark eye. Gorgeous. And what do we got? Oh, cool! All right, so that's another one of those sea potatoes, inflated sea biscuits, heart urchin things. And again, with those little hairs. So that's kind of neat. Neato. So we have another... Oh, oh, yeah, didn't want to get my feet wet. I was marveling at my treasure. Forgot about the water. So this is also an urchin. Just a little flat. The keyhole urchin, or the five-hole keyhole sand dollars. Some of these things really do have lots of names. I'm not going to hold on to that. The color doesn't bother me so much. It had a little chip, a little broken. So I'll leave that for someone else. A little pear whelk. Missing most of its color, but that's all right. The shell itself is intact. I'll hold on to that lovely little pear whelk. Oh, it's alive. All right, so we have a banded tulip that is alive. So let's see what we can see. And I figured I just wanted to observe it. I want to try not to pick it up. I like to kind of see them move. And uh, yes, they're snails. So it might take a minute. So I kind of, in this next spot, I'm going to speed this up a little. And you can kind of see its little head moving around. Oh, that's so cool. And then, yeah, a wave. Oh, missed my, min my moment. My moment with this little banded tulip oh well 
Sorry, friend. I got, we got to see a little bit of you, which was cool. Thanks so much. So that's the front of the shell there, where the opening is. And then the closed part is actually the back of the shell. All right, we'll just leave you there to do your banded tulip thing. So since I am here on an island that not many people live full time, some people live like, I don't know, four people live here full time. Um, I kind of have the place to myself, which was quite nice, frankly. Look at this. This is, I literally have this island to myself. Another base scallop through my grin. I'm picking up more seashells and just, just being happy that my feet are dry. I'm really not that cold. And I'm here on this gorgeous island looking for seashells. That is a fighting conch. And oh, it's pretty. So Florida fighting conch is a weakness of mine. And I'm not finding too, too, too much. I probably got some room in my shell bag for you. Another one of those calico clams. All right, so it's calico clam day at Coya Costa. And that's fine because they're quite fancy clams. Ooh, you have some nice color lightning whelk. Yeah, that's beautiful. Even on the aperture, the kind of like dark line on the aperture. Oh, we haven't seen one of these yet today. Apple murex, oh dear, okay. So someone was trying to recycle that apple murex, kind of get some of that calcium out of the shell. That is a giant Atlantic cockle, but it's just a small version. So I'm gonna hold on to two very lovely sandy shells. Oh, yes, another shark eye. Oh, oh, you're so pretty. Would I have got my feet wet for that? Probably, all right, it's a tiny bit chipped on the bottom. Oh, you're so pretty, yeah. We, look at how big that is. I never find them like that. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous shark eye. Yeah, I have a weakness. For, oh, and then you turn it over and it's got that bright orange color. So yeah, that is another beautiful Florida fighting conch. One of the lemon versions that I just can't resist. Beautiful. Well, hi there, baby's ear. Yep, I know exactly what. What? Aww. Oh, that's so cruel. That is so cruel. Because I just don't like the shells that are broken and have stuff like that. So I'm not going to hold on to that. But, oh man. <laughs> well, all right. Now I want to find a baby's ear. So I'm on the hunt. I'm on the hunt for a baby's ear. Check this out. So that is a piece of a saltwater catfish skull. It kind of looks like a crucifix. So I just quickly looked up crucifix shell and I come to find out that this is a saltwater catfish. Kind of neat, right? It's broken. You can see that bottom left piece is broken, but just kind of neat. Something else that uh, some people collect. I'll probably hold on to this one. What did I score? Oh, an apple murex, but dang it. Anyway, <laughs> it's missing a little piece, but the color is beautiful. So we have an imperfect yet quite lovely apple murex. A disc docenia. Yeah, these and the paper figs you'll find en masse um, after storms. And it has been quite windy here. <gasps> oh, yay. Oh, oh, I found two. Okay. Another sand dollar. Or two. Yes. Excellent. All right, so I did pass up on that one earlier, but yep, awesome. Couple of awesome lightning. Well, and yeah, while I'm here, I might as well grab this, this cool giant Atlanta cockle. Kind of got a thing for them lately. Yep, some more sandy treasures. Awesome. Another big old cockle. Now, what I liked about this one though, so this is what kind of intrigued me. It's kind of got like a double shell going on here. Yeah, look at that. So as if there was like a burst of food or there was a burst of something and it got energy and was able to kind of grow almost like a second shell neat right and so the other broken piece was the same way but i was just a little more interested in that one that was not broken kind of cool oh and the little shorebirds i don't know if there's anything cuter than those little birds so they're with me as i'm 
kind of walking the water's edge here. There was a little bit of a rack line higher, but I seem to be kind of finding more stuff down here. Clearly not in the water, but close to the water. Another one of those giant Atlantic cockles. Oh, yeah, it's broken pretty, though. And a sand dollar, however, it's kind of broken funny. I know. Yeah, I am that picky. It's it's awful. But look, I'll just leave that for someone else and I'll just take this one instead. So yeah, another five hole keyhole urchin. <gasps> Very spiky, spiny jewel box. Oh, I, I'm telling you, when they're spiky, I just think that they are the most beautiful. And to think that a snail, like this little smushy creature, creates these spiky, formidable shells. I just think that's really neat. Oh, hi, Lettered Olive. What's going on with you? Okay. Apparently, you did not pass the shine test. Oh, man. And yeah, I'm not going to collect that one either. What about you? What about you, Lightning Welk? All right, you're looking pretty good. All right, after all that, we'll just hold on to that lovely Lightning Welk. All right, the sun's coming out a little bit. Okay, Banded Tulip, empty. Fabulous. We'll hold on to that banded tulip. Oh, yeah, that one's kind of pretty, right? Florida Fighting Conk, a juvenile version. And I know, oh, see, this one's kind of broken. Oh, that was a fighter, wasn't it? Yeah. So that makes it neat. I do like the unusual, broken, kind of weird shells. You are just pretty. There's nothing weird about you. You are just a lovely calico scallop. Unfortunately, you're just pretty. Sorry. You're not a little weirdo. What do we got? A shark eye for sure. Oh, and another lettered olive. Yeah, nice looking shark eye if I do say so myself. And a lettered olive. And let's see, is that, yeah? Looks like it passed the shine test. Some more awesome Sandy shells. Oh, cute. Calico clam the hinged variety. Yep, cute little shell. Now these, now check this one. This is a cut ribbed arc, but look at the periostricum. It's kind of like feathery in that bottom right there. So that the animals, they grow kind of like an outside coating. That's the periostricum, kind of cool. So that is a cut ribbed arc. And this is a lovely rack line. Plenty of shells. What all is here? So this is a broad ribbed cardita. And if you kind of look close, it's real there's only like three or four different species of shells here. That's a transverse arc, it's broken, and then that is a crossbarred Venus clam. Transverse crossbarred. So I know that's crossbarred. So it I, it looks like a lot of shells, and there are, that's a ponderous arc, so that's one of the three. And that's a lady in waiting Venus clam. So there's not, there's a lot of shells here, but honestly, there's really only like maybe four or five or six different species here. It's a lot of the more common stuff. So just kind of pick through it, kind of meander down this gorgeous beach, see if I can find something unusual. So I did decide because the weather was going to be in the 50s to keep my feet dry. I did have to do a lot of planning about what I was going to bring for this trip and I just just didn't want to be cold. So these are boots that we just kind of had. They are not a sponsor. They're Smith's American quality footwear and they're kind of waterproof and more importantly they definitely keep me warm. So these are the shoes that I'm wearing right now. Um, if I find anything better I will be sure to share that with you. Now I think it is high time for me to be quiet for just a little while and let you enjoy some beach time. Now, is this the one? Look at how weird and fun this lettered olive is. 
So there was two lettered olives on this particular trip that really just kind of spoke to me. This was one of them. It's just, it's bent. The shell should not be like that. So either the animal was injured and just continued to grow its shell or the shell was damaged. I just, again, I think that's kind of neat. The different ways that these animals can just repair themselves. So that's just, it's just a piece of coral. So another treasure we can get in addition to all the sand dollars and all the seashells is we can periodically find coral here too. And that is a dark serif. When those shells are in really good condition and they're kind of on the larger side, they're absolutely beautiful. All the little beads on them. I love that. Here I am all by myself on this island. Pinch me. And it's, look, it's not even that cold. It's 53. It's fine. You can tell my, my hands are in the water. You can see the tide is coming back in at this point. So I'm not too, too cold. I'm not in the water because of my feet. I don't want to get my feet wet. That is a calico scallop with that sunburst pattern. In my opinion, just makes that really desirable. And I thought this was really cool. The problem with this shell is that it's not available. There is an inhabitant. So the animal for this Florida fighting conch is not done with its shell. And that's how heavy those shells are. You can't tell if it's, there's an animal in it because the, the shells are just so heavy. That, look at that. Look at that white, blinding white color. Oh, it's beautiful. So that's a Florida prickly cockle, but it is albino. It's gore. I love finding those. That's not really rare, but I still love them. Another calico scallop with that nice kind of sunburst pattern. Okay, I'm holding it weird probably because there's some... There was a lot of wind. So that's another calico scallop. Oh, and this olive, I swear, like I saw it and my heart started racing. So it's not albino and it's not golden. It's almost like in between the two. So it's just this, as you can see, it's very light yellow color, but still like, it's beautiful. So that's gonna go on my special shell box. I just really like it. Not quite golden, not albino, but you sure are pretty. So I'm gonna hold on to that lettered olive. Oh, <laughs> again with the baby's ear. Yeah, that one's broken. Uh, I do, I really enjoy finding the baby's ears. I wish they were more plentiful. I know they are in some of the beaches in the Carolinas, but down here, a little bit slimmer, a little harder to find them. Oh, kitten's paw, and it's hinged. Now, it bears repeating. I've found them hinged like that, and I cannot open them, and someone told me it was like fossilized. I, I always leave this stuff I'm not sure about at the beach. Now, this is a piece of a sand dollar. This is a piece of an arrowhead sand dollar. I've only ever found one other one here on Coya Costa. That's just a piece of an arrowhead sand dollar. And check out this, and it has a hole, but it's supposed to have a hole. That's a cayenne keyhole limpet. A keyhole limpet. So another lovely little shell, a weird little thing. It's supposed to have that hole. I like it. So here's a Florida prickly cockle. We had found an albino one, and I really do like these shells. I love kind of seeing what that under the colors underneath are going to be They're those sherbet colors sometimes it's purple sometimes there'll be a little bit of yellow i just like them and i mentioned this shell a little earlier this is a lady in waiting venus clam so i don't know if i like the name more than the shell i like them both i, I <laughs> lady in waiting venus clam so at this point, I'm going to turn around because I get I can't stay out here forever. I'd sure like to, but probably getting a little hungry. I'd like some coffee. Oh, <gasps> a baby's here. Oh, it's a little fossilized. Like it's the, the coloring's a little off. That's okay. It's intact. Yay. I wanted to find a baby's ear and I did. So yeah, quite costly. You can get baby's ears here. So go figure. Look at this beautiful angel wing. You are lovely angel wing. So yeah, I did manage to find a lot of the baby's ears right in front of the home that I'm staying. 
And we'll see that in just a minute. So some more treasures, I'm not quite done. All right, that olive, I'm likely not going to keep. You're kind of broken. Yeah, let's not talk about you. Let's look at this. Well, for a sand dollar, I'm going to say you're just about perfect. You're so pretty. I'm surrounded by pretty things. That sunrise was unbelievable. This island is beautiful. And I'm just feeling so very grateful. And when I think about gratitude, I think about my Patreons because I am so very grateful for you so thank you thank you so very much for supporting me and coming along with me every week to do these amazing adventures i'm having so much fun here and we're, we still got some seashells to collect look at that that's my most favorite florida prickly cockle ever oh that's so pretty until maybe i pick up the next one that might be my most favorite one all right so this is another piece of that thin fingered coral. Oh, that's kind of neat. I mean, it's kind of sad. I guess it's all sad. All the stuff I collect is dead stuff, right? Stuff that used to be alive that is not any longer. Now this chalky lucene, I wish it didn't have a hole in it. The only other time I've seen this, I think I might've seen one at Kais, was I found it here at um, Coya Costa. So that's a chalky lucene, really cool shell. I don't get to see that very often. I'm not gonna collect it because it's broken, but let's see what else. I'm quite sure there's plenty of other unbroken treasures here. Calico scallop, beautiful. Just like a kiss of that purple color. Oh, it's so pretty. A lovely calico scallop. Oh, and a semele, the Atlantic white semele. Another fun shell. Just kind of very specifically shaped that semele. And this, I was, I was going, please be empty, please be empty, please be empty. Because, like I said, you can't tell because of the weight, the shell. Yes! Keeper! Look at the color on that. How cool is that? First of all, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the zigzags. And to have it, the different colors like that, oh, yeah. That is so cool. So we have a really, really cool Florida fighting conch. Woohoo! Now, wood. Wood is something you don't often see me pick up because I don't often find it, frankly. So since this is manageable, it's not like it's a big old limb, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to collect that little piece of wood. Are you empty? Oh, yes, you are. I got to pick up a lot of lightning rocks to get, a, get some keepers. That one's a nice one. So that is a nice looking lightning rock. <gasps> oh darn it well it's broken but this is an atlantic pearl oyster how cool is that yep i found similar oysters before i just love so that nacre that mother of pearl so those squishy little critters they create that pearl oh and a quick fun fact less than five percent of pearl oysters actually have pearls oh and a pear of buttercup leucines. They seem to be rather buttery. Very, very nice. Oh, what else did I spy? Oh, an operculum. It's a little trap door that appears to be from a lightning whelk. Yep, so a neat little operculum. Sometimes I collect them, sometimes I don't. If they're in good condition, I do tend to kind of hold on to them. What about you? Oh, you're kind of neat. You're kind of light. Yet you're still quite lovely. So a light lightning whelk. Say that five times fast. Now, I'm kind of hoping one of y'all can help me out with this. So this is clearly a bone. It was super light. Like it was, it was very, very, very light. It was just weird because normally if you picked up a bone, they're dense. And I was wondering, is it from a bird? Do birds really have like lighter bones? I don't know. I didn't keep it. I just kind of, yeah, you I know, just kind of picked it up. I was hoping that maybe somebody could help me and, you know, sh shine some light on that for me. Apple Murex, finally. Oh, yeah, you are in fabulous shape. So a lovely Apple Murex. Fantastic. All right, another angel wing. Yay. Oh, yeah. That is a lovely looking shell. A true angel wing, but that is an angel wing. All right, so we're back at the point 
This is kind of pretty. I wonder, you know, I'd only been here a couple of times before Hurricane Ian, so I don't know what this looked like previously. I suspect there was a lot more sand here. Now, it has been really quite windy um, ever since we've been here. This was right before the storms that came in the weekend of December 16th and 17th. So I'm here the week prior to that. That is a rough scallop. I'm trying to hold on to because the wind is kicked up and it will blow that shell right out of my hand. So I'm gonna hold on to that. So this is really fun because I'm just kind of making my way back to where I'm staying. I don't have to leave. I'll be able to stay here. So I'm walking back. See where it's the tide is at 0.51 feet. And we'll talk specifically about why I'm kind of mentioning that back by these docks next week. I thought for sure that was alive. I thought for sure that was going to be a living lightning whelk but it's not look how orange isn't that beautiful gorgeous so another real nice lightning well no two are the same so you collect your heart's content i do love a good worm snail look at this one awesome so an awesome looking florida worm snail and a pear whelk look at the cut so nice rich color on that lovely pear whelk yep you're looking pretty good, Pear Wilk. And there was another one, yeah. But, mm-hmm, yeah. You're just not as pristine. So I'll just hold on to the pretty one. And then the last shell we're gonna pick up today is this Calico Scallop. Now, I'm not done shelling. I am done filming for the video, per se, because my adventure actually started yesterday when I got here. So let me tell you just a little bit about that. So I was able to finally see white pelicans. I don't get to see them all that much. And so I get very excited when I do see them. They migrate here in the winter. So that's the only time you're, I'm ever gonna have an opportunity to see them. And they feed very differently than the brown pelicans. So I get to see the brown pelicans all the time. That's all these other birds that are around. But those white ones, they herd fish and then they dip their heads in and eat. So they don't dive the way that the brown pelicans do. So that's how my adventure started. And then I got to check out the accommodations that we would be staying at. So we did arrive on a Monday afternoon and we left on a Thursday morning, just to give you an idea of when we were here. So this is it, you're here at Casa Keo Costa. So you'll come underneath here. Now on the left here, you will see a thing that says reading room that is a restroom so there is a restroom on this level and then out the back you do see there is a little hot tub and there is a little deck out to the back area we're going to talk about that next week look at the knicker nuts so those are knicker beans from a knicker nut tree i thought that was kind of cool now once you go into the home this is what you see on the very top floor so three stories up is your living accommodations. This is where you'd hang out, maybe play cards. There are some games and stuff here. And this is where you get that great view. So that is where you would see the sunset. The kitchen was fully equipped with everything you could possibly need. We wanted for nothing. And then you have the view out the front of the Pine Island Sound. So there's your kitchen with your refrigerator and the view, this view was unbelievable so this is the day we got here it was rather nice it was pretty cloudy and windy the rest of the time we were here which doesn't bother me one bit just from a viewing perspective this was a really pretty day so the view was quite amazing and you can see how it was whipping up so the next day is when i went shelling and it was much much windier so that's where we started there's the point so i got to walk to there then kind of wrap around the corner and i'm out in the Gulf of Mexico. This is one of the three bedrooms that are available. This would sleep two people quite comfortably. This room would also sleep two people quite comfortably. So that first room I just showed you plus this room would share and it's not adjoining, it's kind of in the hallway, but you get this bathroom. So it is a full bathroom for those two bedrooms. And then there is a third bedroom, that's this room. Isn't it pretty? So this room has also has its own little balcony with a shower outside. Look at that. So it's cold. It was too cold when we were here, but you could have an outdoor shower there. 
And then there, it is an ensuite, so it does have the restroom right in that room. So that's your three bedrooms on this particular floor. So the upstairs was all those beautiful views. One story down was all the bedrooms. And then on the very bottom is what I showed when we walked through. You are living off grid. So you do need to be cognizant. It was nothing other than kind of exciting, frankly, to just, you know, no, turn the lights out when you're not in the room. Now you can go ahead and check this place out over on Facebook. Look for Kea Costa Paradise Found. That yellow house there, that's where I stayed. And then if you wanted to further look into this, there's the URL for Facebook that I just told you about. There is the URL below that for the Airbnb listing. You can check out the website over at kocostarentals.com or reach out to John directly. The number is displayed on screen and all of this information I will put in the description box below. Now I did stay here, I said for three nights. Next Sunday, we are going to, we're staying on Kea Costa, so I'm going to show you another adventure here. If I missed anything, just leave a comment below because I can possibly try to address that in the next video. It was just so much fun and I really would encourage you to come here. It can comfortably sleep many people. I was not bored one minute. If you kind of like the kind of things, or you think you might like the kind of things that I like, you would love this place. Now, I did myself a favor and I shot these while I was there. So I did pick up a couple of those Sunray Venus clams, a couple of those angel wings below, that crucifix shell, that piece of driftwood, the inflated sea biscuits, the sand dollars, the shark eyes, the giant Atlantic cockles. We have some bay scallops, a bunch of those Florida prickly cockles, including some albino prickly cockles, the discocenias. I see a cut ribbed arc there, some of those semeles, the one spiny jewel box, some of those Florida fighting conks. You see the pear whelk, lots of those lightning whelks, the one dark serith. Oh, look, a smooth duck clam. And then there's also some scallops. I see a yellow, um, or I'm sorry, buttercup leucines. And then we did get a lot of those calico clams. Not surprising. There was that one apple murex. This is my favorite stuff. The one baby's ear, the cayenne keyhole limpet, the Atlantic oyster, and those olives. They were kind of unusual. So I am thrilled with my treasures. I am thrilled with where I am. And I'm probably just going to relax in the hot tub for a few minutes and then contemplate what all fun stuff I'm going to find the next day. So like I said, next week, we're going to be back here. And can I tell you next week, I find a bucket list shell. It's really pretty exciting. So again, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below, but I will see you again next Sunday. Have yourself a great week.